Welcome back, Tennis and Wind Coaches, to part two of working with challenging students. Again, the goal is to have more tools that you can utilize on court when working with a difficult student. Who is this Jimmy kid and what makes him tick? You know, if he's like most kids, positive reinforcement is what they thrive off of. We don't know what Jimmy's family life is like, but maybe it's all negative. So if I have, one, I have a difficult student, I'll pick a day where they're really doing a great job. I'll bring the group in and I'll say, hey guys, you guys see how great a job Jimmy is doing? Did you see that forehand he ripped down the line? He's gonna be my hardest worker today. Sometimes just that action alone is enough to completely turn a student around. Let's talk about court dynamics as our next tool. Student dynamics, really. You know, Jimmy might be a, a, a fine student, but not when he's partnered with Frankie. Jimmy might be a great student, unless he's on the same court with Susie, who he has a crush on. By understanding these, these student dynamics, I can place the students on a specific side of the court or on a different court to get the best results. Also, if I've got multiple courts with multiple coaches, maybe Jimmy works well with Coach A, but not with Coach B. So I will do my part to, put, to place a difficult student in the best, the best position for them to have success, for all of us really to have success. Let's talk about our next tool, which is the time out. If you've ever worked with kids before, or if you're a parent, you understand the time out well. You're misbehaving, you're not following the rules, I'm going to sit you out a little bit. It works the same on the tennis court. So in this situation, Jimmy, you're talking over me, and that's your warning. Jimmy, you talked over me again. I'm going to sit you out this drill. And I'll have Jimmy sit out next to me on the side of the court. I can never send a student out of the court. I can never kick a student out of class. We're liable for the kids during the time that they're, they're with us. So I have to always keep them on court. And I never make it personal. I'll never say, Jimmy, get over to the court. <laughs> it's always very calm and I'll say, Jimmy, I'm sitting you out because you talked over me. And at the end of the drill, I'll bring him back in with on one condition. I'll ask him, Jimmy, can I count on you not to talk over me? When he agrees, he'll come back into the drill. The timeout is a great tool. Okay, here is the next tool. I have deputized some of my most challenging students. I've asked them for help. I've pulled them aside and I've said, hey, Jimmy, you know, the kids out here really look up to you. A lot of times with disruptive students, that is actually true. And the kids look, look up to you, you know, you're a leader out here. And Jimmy will go, really, huh? <laughs> I need your help, Jimmy. I need your help to be on the best behavior. And sometimes that works fabulously. Sometimes it doesn't work. With all of these tools, I'm going to trial and error until I find something that works. Some of them won't work. Some of them will work with some students, but not others. Some of them will be absolutely miraculous. So don't be afraid to deputize a challenging student. Okay, let's talk about where we go when a lot of this isn't working. And that is to the, to the parents of the student. And it'll start with a warning to Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, we've been working together. I've asked you to make progress in these areas. You're still struggling. If it happens again, I'm gonna to need to talk with your parents. And then if it happens again, I will, at the end of class, let's say there's another class starting up, I'll take one of my top students and have them stretch out the next group. Meanwhile, I'll talk to Jimmy's parents for a few minutes and I'll just say to them, I need your help. I want Jimmy in the class, but Jimmy is disruptive. He threw his racket the other day and he's talking over me when I'm talking, I need your help. And I'll see, where that goes. A lot of times the parent will will do their part and there will be a turnaround just based on that conversation that the coach has with the parent. Well, let's say that doesn't work. Your next tool is to, to notify me, notify Coach Bill, and I'll reach out to the parent. Now the supervisor of the program is calling the parent and letting them know, hey, we're having problems with, with your child. They are talking when the coach is, talk, is talking, they threw the racket. Specifics, I want to give them specifics and I'll let them know if it, doesn't, if it doesn't change, then we'll need you as a parent to be at the courts during the entire duration of the student's class in order for them to stay enrolled. 
Parents don't like that. I mean, unless it's a peewee class where they're there already, in general, they drop them off, they come pick them up after, they don't wanna be there, and so that is negative reinforcement for them and puts pressure on them to uh, work with their child, to bring their child to where they need to be. Have I ever had to suspend a student for two weeks? Absolutely, I've done it in the past. Have I ever had to kick out a student from tennis anyone for good? I've done it one time in 30 years. We don't ever wanna to get to that point. Usually you're working through these tools and things start to click. And again, the goal is always a turnaround. You must keep your cool. The moment you lock horns with the student, you end up on equal ground. And as the, as the instructor, you should always be here and the student should always be here. That is the rightful, appropriate position to be in. But the moment you lose your cool, you bring yourself down. So keep your cool out there. Let's work together. Let's work for turnarounds with all of these, these kids that are challenging. And let's face it, 90% of our kids out there are fantastic. They wanna be there and it's wonderful being with them. Keep up the great work team.